We're gonna go ahead and move forward with some introductions. Please hold your questions to the end of the webinar where we'll use the raised hand feature and call upon people one at a time to ask questions. You can also direct your question to an individual um, if it's specific. For example, if your question is for a nurse or for a principal or a teacher. So we'll go ahead and get started with um, some introductions. All right, I'll get started because I'm first up. My name is Emily Sickler and I am the proud principal of Harvest Elementary School. Uh, this is coming up with my fourth year. I just wanna reiterate with what Michelle said is that we are so excited to welcome you and your family um, as we start this journey together. We take uh, this so seriously, myself, Michelle and Kenyatta, the, these principles of the work that we get to do to work shoulder to shoulder with you as families as we start um, this educational journey together. Kenyatta, do you wanna introduce yourself? Absolutely. Uh, good evening. My name is Kenyatta Hughes. I am the principal at Pleasant Ridge Elementary. Um, thank you for being here with us on this beautiful, warm evening. You could have chose to be anywhere else, but you have chosen to be here with us. So we are excited about that. I would like to kind of echo what my colleagues have said as it relates to um, our commitment to ensuring that your child has a great early childhood quality experience. Welcome. And I'm Michelle Chekowitz. I am the principal of Woodland Meadows. This is my 10th year as principal of Woodland Meadows. And we have an amazing team. Um, Mrs. Hughes and Ms. Sickler and myself work very closely together. And I can assure you that whatever building your child is assigned to, they will have an outstanding school experience. So welcome, we're so glad you're here. Many people ask us what are the differences and similarities between the Young Fives program and the kindergarten program? So we'll start with what are the similarities and what kinds of things should we be considering? Um, the first one is we start with students can independently use the restroom. This one always brings a chuckle because we know that bathrooming issues is a normal part of growing up and potty training is a normal part of development for our students. Um, the difference is when I recall potty training my own children, they may be in the bathroom and I would hear that call down the hall, mama, come wipe me. And I would jump up, leap over the coffee table, run down the hall and perform those cleaning duties for, for my child. And we both smiled, um, but I had one child. And in our classroom, our teachers can have 25 children in the classroom. And we know that if they were able to do that, they would never leave the bathroom. So please, this is the time between now and the beginning of school to work with your child on all of those skills that are so important so that they can take care of themselves and use the bathroom. Recognizing when they have to go, coming into the bathroom, learning to close the door when they're in the bathroom for privacy, going to the bathroom, cleaning themselves, pulling their pants up and down, washing hands, and flushing the toilet. All very, very important skills um, to begin working on now because in the classroom, our teachers are busy working with those other 24 children in the classroom. Um, please know that we recognize that we may have some students who may be medically disabled and need assistance. We recognize those and we can provide assistance that way through your child's IEP if they're medically disabled. Um, we also know that there are sometimes accidents. So your child will be asked to bring a change of clothes, but the importance of knowing how to remove their wet clothes and putting on new dry clothes um, so that they can perform that independently. Um, what else is the same about young fives and kindergarten? Coming to school. We know that both young fives and kindergarten have the ability to come to school on school bus. Some of our students will be in the walk zone. Some of our students will be driven to school. All of those options are available for our kindergartners and young five students, depending on how close they live and what their boundary is and whether or not transportation is offered. The very first day of school, for first grade through our age 26 students, um, 
transportation is not offered for kindergarten and young fives. Let me repeat that, the very first day of school. And the reason is, is because we provide an orientation program for those students. We recognize that transition to come to school, to be away from their family for a full day at school may be difficult for some students. So your child will be scheduled for a five minute orient, uh, a 45 minute orientation with you, as well as about six to eight other students so they can learn some familiar faces, see the teacher, find their locker or where to put their things and become familiar with the school environment. And then the second day of school will be our young fives and kindergartners first day of school where they can take a bus to school. Um, also similar is the building schedule. So our school building, school begins at 851. Students enter the building at 835 and the end of the school day is 344. Um, that is for both young fives and kindergarten. Safety and security is the same. All of our guests come through. Our district has um, promoted safe and secure entryways where we have a buzzer system in all of our buildings. We also have all of our volunteers um, that use the Raptor system to, to scan and make sure that they're safe to be with our students. Um, so safety and security uh, will be the same for young fives and kindergarten. We also practice all of our security drills and safety drills like fire drills and um, severe weather drills, as well as lockdown drills, internal or external in intruder drills. So we teach kids the skills to stay safe through those experiences. Lunch and food service is the same. Students in both young fives and kindergarten can choose to bring a lunch from home or they can also get a hot lunch from our cafeteria available each day. The specials program is the same for young fives and kindergarten. Our specials program consists of art, music, PE, which is gym or physical education, our media program, and our innovation lab. That's all five, right? I think, yeah. And students will get those specials each week, uh, depending on wherever school they go to. Um, and students will have recess with their grade level peers. So they will be out playing on the playground and enjoying time and social interactions with their peers. Now we think about some ways that they are different. Um, the Young Fives program, the focus on Young Fives is really on developing those social skills. So the academics and that and for young fives is more secondary or is more secondary and not the primary focus. We want kids to learn how to be in school and to develop those social skills. The curriculum for young five is less rigorous. So there is an active link there that we can click on. And I might even be able to pull it right up. I think I would have to stop my share. But there's an active link that'll be available for you on the district website to see the Young Fives curriculum, which focuses on early numeration, early lettering, and phonics, whereas our kindergarten program students are, are doing more advanced areas with academics and learning to read by the end of the year. Young Fives has more rest time and play time built into the program so that they can really build those social skills. If you're interested in Young Fives, how do you know that your student is eligible to attend Young Fives? So students who are eligible to attend Young Fives will turn five between August 1st of this year and December 1st. Students whose birthdays are after December 1st are not eligible. However, it's important it's important for the school district and the parents to determine a need to attend Young Fives. And so to help do that, we host a screening process where your child will be screened because we wanna make sure that your child is challenged appropriately for what their needs are. If they're already ready to, to learn to read and know their letters and sounds, kindergarten may be the appropriate placement for them. So the screening process, um, will allow us to help give you some guidance on where we think your child is best placed in Salinary schools. Ultimately, after you review that guidance, if your child's birthday falls between, between those dates, um, you'll have to make the final decision. But we will provide you some guidance based on that Young Five screening.
if your birthday if your student doesn't have a birthday that falls between August 1st and December 1st, will you still have availability into the Young Fives program? There is some chance that that could happen, but it really def depends on the following. The first is, is there room available in any of our buildings? We truly staff our programs and our buildings based on student need and um, the need across the district based on our enrollment numbers. The second piece is when screen, does the child really demonstrate a need to be in young fives as opposed to kindergarten? We also look at the student's birthday. How close are they? Was it a July 31st birthday and they just missed the cutoff or do they have an early March birthday? So that will make, that will make a difference as well. And also we look to see if the student has identified needs. Does the entire IEP team agree that that placement is appropriate? Some of our students who have IEP needs, their accommodations are enough and they can be placed right in kindergarten and their special ed accommodations are exactly what they need to keep them with their peers. All right, thank you so much, um, Michelle. So I, again, am Emily, uh, principal at Harvest, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about um, Young Five screening. So the screening process we use is called the Brigance, and you can see the dates. We have three dates where you would register for that. Like Michelle said earlier, you are able to get this information and then make a decision if you're looking at maybe Young Fives or kindergarten. The Brigant screening has two components to it. So when you sign up for the screening, you and your child will come and we have social workers and we have our school psychologists that help and you'll go into the same space and your child will do a series of tasks and then um, you'll be asked a series of questions. From there, that will be scored and then you'll get um, a printout which gives that recommendation. Those are the the pieces, and we realize that's just one data point. So there are some families I've already spoken to. They're like, here's our child's birthday. Here's what we're looking for. We're going to sign up for Young Fives, and that is what we feel is best. That is fine. We are not re we don't require the Brigant's, Brigant screening, Brigant screening, goodness, um, for that. But you possibly are a family that just wants that additional data point to help make the uh, informed decision for that. If that's the case, you would sign up and you can see the dates are Monday, May 9th, Thursday, May 12th, and Wednesday, May 18th. And once you go in to do the registration, which we'll be speaking about later in this presentation, that will sort of start the registration and then we'll send you the link to sign up for that screening. All right, so again, focusing on that Young Fives, we currently offer um, two sections of Young Fives at Harvest, one section at Woodland Meadows and two sections at Pleasant Ridge. So that's what we did this year. That being said, we have not determined sections yet because all of that is numbers and sort of the need. And so that could flex um, between our three buildings based on what we see coming up with the registration. And these are important. Again, this is going to come out again, so you don't need to feel like you're frantically writing down, but just wanted uh, to be noted that late August is when we have an open house. An open house is a wonderful time for you to come in with your family and see your child's classroom and meet your child's teacher. They're there at open house. We haven't secured that date yet, but we'll let you know. From there, we have our first day of school, which is Monday, August 29th. And for all young fives and kindergarten families, that day we call an orientation day. So you and your child will come in for a 45 minute orientation only. And it's a really nice way it's split um, throughout the whole day that your child and you are gonna have a little bit more of an intimate um, experience with your teacher where they can get to know you, the child can see their classroom without the whole class. And then for all of our young fives and kindergarten family uh, students, the their first official day of school is Tuesday, August 30th. So that's the day they get to ride the bus for the first time and go to the lunchroom and recess and specials and all those things that I know you've been waiting years to have that experience. That's going to happen for them, but you have to wait until Tuesday, August 30th. Hello again, I am Kenyatta Hughes from Pleasant Ridge, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the kindergarten screening that we offer um, within the district. 
The purpose of the screening is to offer a short 15 minute session um, with a kindergarten teacher in order to um, get a better sense of your child's academic and social emotional skills. Um, within this process, our, our, our priority and our goal is to create some balanced classrooms in all of our kindergarten classes. Um, at this time, vision screening will also be available. All kindergarten students should sign up for a screening time. This is very important, even if they have attended Young Fives. Following that registration, everyone will receive a screening sign-up link, which will, be, which will be shared with you after registration. If the days for screening at your home building does not work for your schedule, you can sign up at another building and have the same um, screening perform with staffing at that prospective building. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen for planning purposes and to kind of look at your calendar, calendar to make sure that you have secured a date between one of the three buildings for this screening, um, Harvest is July 28th and August 1st. Pleasant Ridge is August 1st and August 2nd. And Woodland Meadows is July 27th and August 1st. Now we will have Mrs. Marion to introduce our kindergarten team, our teaching staff at Pleasant Ridge. She is our teaching lead in the grade level. And we will also have Mrs. Austin to introduce the Young Fives staff at Pleasant Ridge as well. Thank you. Welcome everyone. I, my name is Julie Marion and I am one of the Pleasant Ridge teachers. Um, I am the grade level chair there. We have five kindergarten teachers this year. It fluctuates. Um, for the last few years, we've had five. So we have um, Miss Joanne Tork. Ms. Chander, Mrs. Batterson, Chandra Batterson, Mrs. Helen Rodriguez, and Ms. Catherine Wallavan. Those are the five teachers that teach kindergarten at Pleasant Ridge. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Austin, and I teach Young Fives at Pleasant Ridge. Currently, there are two sections at, at Pleasant Ridge, and Ashlyn, Simeon, and I teach those. There are also three other sections at the other buildings. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to introduce them or not, so I'm gonna let that go, but we are so excited to welcome all of our Young Fives families next year. It's such a great program and we'd love to have you join us. Hi, I'm Stacy Horvath, and I'm a very proud kindergarten teacher here at Harvest Elementary. Um, we have a wonderful staff of teachers down our uh, kindergarten and young fives hallway. Um, we have Nancy Zabrowski, Jen Strip, myself, Allison Mayer, and our two young fives teachers are Macy German and Liz Bueller. And we're really looking forward to welcoming your families. Um, welcome to those who are experiencing kindergarten for the first time or young fives, and um, welcome back to those families who we're seeing again. Hi there, my name is Nick Ball. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers at Woodland Meadows. All our other moving faces are popping up. Uh, I have the pleasure of working with April Rauscher. She is our Young Fives teacher. We currently have one section at Woodland Meadows and also Alicia Lovejoy, Kara Gall, Melissa Waltz, Trisha Raft, and myself, Nick Ball. And I'm excited because I have an incoming Young Fiver who's been popping his head on the screen a few times. So I'm also viewing this as a parent for the first time. Well, I'm up and my name is Ann Hurst Kreitz and I'm the executive director for the Foundation for Saline Area Schools. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit that began in 1987. We provide funding to support creative and innovative initiatives that benefit our students and contribute to the educational excellence of Slane Area Schools. We award teaching, building, district, partnership, and my favorite, student-led grants throughout the school district. Since 1987, we have awarded $1.5 million in grants to Slane Area Schools, which we are really, really proud of. And it is with pride that I have the opportunity to speak to you, young five and kindergarten parents tonight. Many years ago, I was sitting in your spot. However, now I sit here 18 years later, 
with fond memories of my two sons' education. You see, many years ago, I graduated from Slane High School. I would have never imagined that I would have moved back here 20 years ago and have my children also be alumni. One son experienced a fabulous general education with top-notch academics, wonderful athletics, extracurricular activities. My other son experienced our top-notch special education services and continues today as he has completed his high school, but he is now currently in our young adults program here at Liberty. I couldn't be prouder and more thankful for Celine School. So with a state ranking, I believe of just of now fifth and a national ranking of about 661 the last time I looked, Celine Schools continues to aim for educational excellence and the foundation has been able to impact that over the last 35 years, which we are extremely proud of. Now for you parents of kindergartners and young fives, there is so much to look forward to. These wonderful teachers, wonderful principals at all three elementary schools, you will have a fabulous experience. Now, just a few of the grants that we have funded in the last few years that I just wanna highlight and some of them, most of them I'm gonna kind of uh, talk about at the elementary school levels because they will impact your kids, which is great. One thing I am probably most proud of since COVID hit was that we funded something called Celine Live. And what that was, was reliable internet access for all Celine students. When the pandemic hit, we reached out to the district and asked them, what do you need? How can we help you? And we didn't realize when we went virtual, how many students in our community couldn't, didn't even have reliable internet. So up till now, I think we have, a, and we still are helping kids do some virtual work, 150, more than 150 students now have already been helped by the Celine Live grant that we provided. And so we are excited about that. Um, a grant that we just implemented at Pleasant Ridge that Kenyatta wrote this uh, year in the fall, Social Emotional Learning Curriculum, uh, grants called Cooperation and Communication Through Games. One, is one, of my, one of my favorites is, and I can't wait to get over there and, and uh, experience this, but it's called Where in the World? Augmented Reality Globes for Research with Orboot Earth Globes. I have, I can't even pronounce all that, and yet our young kids are doing this. Little collaborators throughout all three of the elementary schools, they have got an old fashioned, what we would call light bright board, but it's a gigantic, a gigantic one at uh, each of the media centers and they are collaborating and they are communicating in a really fun way. Things like Kiva Planks, Ozbots for Kindergartners, Spiro Spark and Robot for Innovation Labs, many, many books actually have been requested in, in the last few years, which is wonderful. Definitely building DEI in the classroom and media centers using chapter books as windows and mirrors, which is very important to us. We funded a three-year project at Woodland Meadows called The Leader in Me. And many of you have heard of Stephen Covey. He was, uh, did the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Well, he did one for young students. And so we are creating leaders over there in Woodland Meadows, which we are so excited about. Inclusive playground, outdoor spaces, and more. And I could go on and on, but I am limited on my time, so I'm going to wrap up. You want to find out more about the foundation. If you want to volunteer, if you want to talk to me, go to supportfsas.org. And I would love to talk to you. We're always looking for more volunteers. Uh, our upcoming spring fundraiser is April 28th at Imagine Theater. And we are excited about that. Tickets are going on sale, I believe, today or tomorrow on our website. We'll have an auction and a silent auction, live auction, and just a wonderful time to gather back together to Imagine, have some fun, watch some movies, and raise money for our wonderful students, okay? And lastly, the first week of school, every kindergartner will get a special backpack from the foundation. <laughs> and because we have wonderful sponsors and donors, they give us swag and we fill those cute little backpacks and every kindergartner will get one the first day of school. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so appreciative that they let me uh, talk to you. And again, if you have any questions, please call me or go to supportfsas.org. You're going to have a great year. Hello, everyone. I think I'm next. It's always uh, hard to follow Ann Hurst, but I'm going to do my best here. Um, welcome to all of you parents, whether you're veteran parents or bringing a kiddo to the district for the uh, first time. We're, we're glad to see you on the call. My name is Karen Hervey. I'm one of the district nurses here. Um, I also oversee nursing services for Celine Area Schools. We are fortunate to have uh, two full-time nurses in the district, me 
And our other nurse is Wendy Portwood. Uh, Wendy covers primarily Harvest in the high school. I cover primarily Pleasant Ridge Woodland Meadows in the middle school and our programs at Liberty School as well. But in the end, we both cover each other and our goal is always to have a nurse um, in the district full time every day um, in the school setting. So what do school nurses do? Uh, some of you may not be aware. We're members of your student school team. We work collaboratively with the rest of the team here to support your student and help them stay healthy at school. Uh, we of course respond as needed in the event of severe illness or injury. Um, but one of our biggest roles is actually to provide case management and care coordination services for our students um, who have those chronic medical conditions um, such as diabetes, seizure disorders, asthma, food allergies, cardiac conditions, and a whole host of other medical conditions. So if your student falls into one of those categories or will need daily medication um, during the school day, uh, we encourage you to reach out to us prior to the start of school, maybe at least by mid to late August before school starts. Um, so we can work together with you and your student's medical provider uh, to determine what their needs are for the school setting. Uh, we also provide communicable disease management. And of course, you can imagine uh, what that entailed over the past two years with COVID. Um, but we do provide commun communicable disease uh, monitoring and reporting as well. Um, so our contact information is listed there on the screen. Um, it's also available on our health services website. I would encourage you guys to um, visit that when you get a chance. Um, if you go to the SeleneSchools.org um, and then under departments, you will find our website there. That includes a lot of the important forms you need for school and a lot of other important information as well. I uh, want to talk briefly about immunizations. Um, there are required vaccines for entry into the school setting for both young fives um, and incoming kindergartners. Uh, that vaccine requirement information is listed on the health services webpage. Um, but I also encourage you to contact your child's primary care physician, their pediatrician. Um, they're absolutely the expert in your child's vaccine status, um, what they might be still needing for school. They're very familiar what's required with what's required for school. Um, so I encourage you to reach out to your child's doctor. Um, and I encourage you to do that now and maybe not wait till August when everyone's trying to get in for uh, physicals, sports physicals and those things. So I would, I would start that process right now. Um, there is a waiver option for vaccines. So um, if that's something you're interested in, please contact one of us and we can give you some more specific um, information about that. One other thing I wanted to talk about was the hearing and vision screenings. Um, under the Michigan Public Health Code and Revised School Code, hearing and vision screening is required for all incoming young five and kindergarten students. Um, those screenings must be completed within six months of the start of school. Um, the hearing screening can be done by your child's pediatrician or primary care physician. Um, but the vision screening um, is required to be done by either the health department or a licensed eye care practitioner. Um, so we, we realize that might be a little harder to navigate. So we're trying to make that convenient for you. Um, and we are trying to set up dates with the Washtenaw County Health Department hearing and vision clinicians to come in during those screening dates that were talked about earlier in the call. Um, so we can make that convenient for you. Um, so you don't have to make a special trip or a special appointment. Those will be free of charge and we will be sharing more information about those dates as they become available. And COVID, don't want to talk too much about COVID, um, only mentioning it because it has been a part of our lives for, and the school setting for the past two years. Um, so some of you may want, be wondering, especially if you're new parents, what that may look like in the fall. Um, at this time, we're hopeful that we're moving from the pandemic disease into the endemic disease for COVID. Um, we're not anticipating that masks will be required at all at school, um, short of a public health order. Um, we are not requiring those now, they're optional. We don't anticipate that will change for the fall. 
much different than last year's call where I was encouraging parents to practice mask wearing with their students. Um, we don't foresee that that will be required um, for the start of school in the fall. Uh, it will remain a reportable illness, though, like pertussis, chickenpox, and those other illnesses. So we will continue to monitor for and report those COVID cases to the health department. So I apologize. My phone's ringing here. Um, but thank you for your time. Uh, we are here to help and support you. And don't hesitate to reach out to your nurses. Uh, once again, welcome, everyone. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Garcia and I'm the Director of Student Services. As Ann Hurst said, we have a very comprehensive model of special education and response to intervention services here in Saline. We service students in young fives all the way through age 26 in our young adult program. We offer a full inclusion model of special education services, which means we do our very best to keep our students here in the local school district um, and offer the full spectrum of least restrictive environments. We have, um, below you'll see the list of what we have available in every building to help keep our students here with their peers and in their gen ed classroom. We have response to intervention groups. These are called win time, best fit groups. It varies a little bit by building, but it's where students get very specialized intervention instruction. We offer speech and language support, social work support, occupational therapy, physical therapy, teacher consultant and resource room instruction. We also have access to a variety of resources on a consultation basis, including um, services from the uh, Washington In Intermediate School District and um, District Board Certified Behaviorist. My contact information is on this slide. If you have any concerns about your young fives or kindergarten and where they're performing, or if a pediatrician is recommended reaching out for some specialized instruction, we look forward to hearing you and collaborating with our elementary buildings. Welcome. Hi there, my name is Tracy Mulcair. I am a supervisor in the transportation department. Um, and myself, along with our team of drivers and bus monitors, cannot wait to meet our incoming kindergarten and young five students. Um, we are here, we're available if you have questions. The best way to contact us is definitely via email. Um, Anna, am I supposed to click the link to our slideshow? I apologize. Okay. Okay. Um, safety, it's our top priority. We strongly encourage parents to enroll their students in Safety Town through community education. I believe that Brian Puffer will be presenting on that here in a couple of minutes. Safety Town teaches uh, students all about school bus safety, including crossing the road at the bus stop, and they'll even get to ride on the school bus if they've been eager to do that. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Celine Schools has three elementary buildings. You heard from the principals from all three. They are Harvest, Pleasant Ridge, and Woodland Meadows. And students are assigned based on where you live. Um, if you're unsure which building boundary that you live in, we're happy to help you out. We don't necessarily publish a picture map of that because it can get a little tricky in, in different neighborhoods and um, boundary lines, and we don't want you to think that you are in one boundary when you may in fact be in another. So the best way to figure that out is to use our street guide on the Saline Schools transportation website or to give us a call. I do know that that street guide is a little outdated. We've got some new subdivisions and we plan to get that updated this summer. Each of our elementary buildings have been designed to keep parent drop-off areas separate from bus drop-off areas. This is for the safety of your students. And we ask you to please follow the instructions that you'll receive from your building principals and never walk or allow your children to walk between buses at the buildings. We definitely appreciate your cooperation here. It is for everyone's safety. Um, on the screen right now, you will see a um, little screenshot from the transportation page on the selenschools.org website. There are a lot of links here that may answer some of your questions, but again, always reach out to us if you have any questions, we're happy to help.
For our young five kindergarten and even first grade students, we do require that they are met at the bus stop by a parent or a responsible adult who has been approved by the parent. This is for safety reasons. We uh, think that they're too young to walk home alone. Uh, sometimes though they have older siblings and we do allow you to write a note for your driver giving permission for them to go home with that older sibling. We know that you're all anxious about the bus assignment information. Our team usually spends the summer working on new routes and the information is sent out using a app we call Ride360 about two weeks before the start of the school year. There will be a registration form on our website to register for busing and that will be out at the beginning of July. We currently provide transportation to and from your home registered address only. And unfortunately, right now we cannot accommodate uh, secondary stops or daycare busing. We will work with split family situations and there is again a form on our transportation website for that request. Lastly, we are in need of new drivers. Uh, we are always looking for drivers for our routes and for substitutes for our routes. Um, and the next year is no different. If you know anybody or if you may have an interest in working as a school bus driver or a school bus monitor, we encourage you to reach out um, to apply. Our phone number and website are there. And um, if you know anybody, please, please give them our information, send them our way. We'd like to get back to being able to provide that daycare busing and some secondary stops, but we need more, more staff to be able to do this. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to meeting all of your students next year. All right, I'm Larry DeAndrea. I'm the Food Service Director for Saline Area Schools. Um, pretty much all the information that we're going to cover is available on salineschools.org under the Food Service tab. The most important things are free and reduced lunch applications, which are available there, uh, creating an account to be able to deposit money into your student's lunch account. You can also view all of the menus for breakfast and lunch, which is served daily. And you can see the meal times in your school, in your child's school. Um, we have been working under a waiver where everyone was receiving uh, free lunch for the past two years. That waiver is not expected to extend to next year. So it's very important that you get your uh, applications on file for the start of the school year, but you can't fill them out until after this school year because your students are not actually students yet. So you need to wait until um, at least July before you start filling out your um, applications. Those can all be done online, but if you do need a paper application, um, you can reach me by email or call me and I can uh, send you one in the mail so you can fill it out and send it back. And if you have any questions, you can reach me on Let's Talk or my phone number and email are listed on the slide. That's all. Thank you, Larry. Hi, I'm Robin Schmidt. I'm from technology here in the district. At Selene Schools, we are hands-on with technology. Starting with the young five and kindergarten students, they are one-to-one -one with iPad minis. They also use headphones in the classroom. Students bring their own from home for their choice and health reasons. One component of using technology is digital citizenship. Digital citizenship is taught in the media and it's supported by our classroom teachers. Another component of technology is computer science introduction, and that happens in media and innovation lab classes. The learning management system that we use here at Selene Area Schools is for young fives in kindergarten is Seesaw. It's a great platform to make those connections. We also have a family resource page located within the district website for more information about technology. Thank you. All right, well, thank you everybody for having me tonight. Uh, my name is Brian Puffer. I am the Community Education Director. Uh, everything I'm gonna go over is, uh, you can click on the top link in the presentation once you get a copy of it, but I will put the links in the chat here once I'm done, um, go through everything. So uh, that'll take you right to all the registration sites and whatnot. So I will go through a couple things here quickly. Uh, once I'm done, please feel free to put stuff in the chat, uh, put any questions you have in the chat. 
uh, and I will gladly respond to them. Uh, first, our summer program guide, which has obviously all of our programs, will be mailed out the week of March 28th. Our registration will begin reg our April 4th. Um, and so we will actually probably post our guide online um, probably a week before March 28th. Uh, so you can find that on all of our social media uh, accounts that we have. We keep that up to date pretty much on a regular basis. Uh, Safety Town registration, which Tracy talked about, is now open. Registration opened uh, a couple of weeks ago, or actually last week. Uh, so we have four sessions. Our session A right now, we are taking a wait list, but uh, we were hoping to add more spots. Uh, B, C, or sessions B, C, and D are still available. Um, so we, we have a registration website. We have a Safety Town website that are on there. Um, but again, you can find all the information by the sites that I'll provide on there uh, if we're done here. Summer sports camps. We do offer quite a few sports camps for kindergartners. Uh, just for instance, we'll have this summer, we have baton, karate, a little dribblers basketball camp. It's very popular. Uh, you can see the picture down to the left there. It's two kids from our, our I think one of our first camps, little dribblers. Uh, we also have girls basketball camps and we also have our tennis lessons for kindergartners. So those are all be available to register for on April 4th when our registration opens. Uh, something else you, you could be interested in the fall is our before and after care program or what you some, we used to call latchkey. That registration will open on May 2nd and we do offer that at all three of the elementary buildings that have the kindergarten program. Um, so we, I guess it is before and in the morning. Uh, I would recommend going to the website. It has all of our information on it. Uh, but please, like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, but again, registration for that, it opens on May 2nd for the 22-23 school year. And the last thing I have is we do have a summer camp coming up. Our summer camp this year will be held at Harvest Elementary School. Um, and so the registration for that uh, opens on April 4th. And to attend that camp, your child has to be five years old on the day they attend camp. So as soon as they turn and they want to come to our summer camp and kind of get a feel for those elementary school buildings and um, that would be great. Uh, our camp does fill up fast. We're hoping to have larger numbers this year. Obviously, the last couple of years, they've been much smaller due to COVID and cohorting. So hopefully this year, we'll be able to have a couple more kids into the camp. And so that begins on April 4th again. And the last thing I have to say is if you follow us on social media, we do update, uh, especially on Twitter and Facebook almost daily. And if we do add new programs that won't be in a guide that does happen, that's where we're going to put them. So that's all I have, and I look forward to working with you and seeing you. Thank you. Good evening, um, incoming Young Five and Kindergarten families. My name is Kathy Giles, and I am the PTA secretary at Harvest Elementary School. I am speaking on behalf of all of the elementary school PTAs. And for those of you who don't know, PTA stands for the Parent Teacher Association. We are a group of parents, teachers, building administrators who work together to um, provide different activities and enrichment um, enhancements and social events throughout your, the school year for your students, as well as sometimes um, events that include families. Um, the PTA is a great way to get involved and um, get to know parents, get to know um, some of the teachers in the building. Um, and um, some of the ways that you can do that is um, by volunteering for the various events, as well as fundraising. I, I believe every school hosts um, a fundraiser or several fundraisers throughout the year to help um, get the funds to do some of those enrichment opportunities and academic enhancements. Um, most of the PTAs will have a table at open house, which will be after the school year starts, where you can sign up to um, get information about joining the PTA or participating, as well as probably volunteering and giving you some of the events that are um, offered. So I hope you um, all consider taking this opportunity to get involved and become a part of your um, new school community. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Rocky. I am the enrollment coordinator at the district office at Liberty School. I appreciate you taking the time tonight, just a few more minutes to go through registration, then we can open it up to questions. Um, registration is now open. It is 100% online. It opened on Monday. 
Um, it can be found to, to find our registration page. You can find it at slaneschools.org under the registration button 2223 registration. 2122 is still open. Please do not um, click on that button or we will have to ask you to resubmit your registration. So just kind of pay, pay close attention to that. Um, it is mandatory for families to upload the following documents before they can submit their child's record in order to complete registration. Um, we require a birth certificate, immunization records, two proofs of residency. Um, there's some information listed for residency, and I'm going to see if I remember it because I can't see the screen. It's not. There we go. Thank you. Uh, driver's license, utility bill, lease agreement, warranty deed, tax bill, or bank statement. Those are the ones that we prefer two proofs of. Um, if you don't have those or have another situation, um, there are a few other documents that we can accept. If you email us at registration at sleenschools.org, we can work with you on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it is also an option to upload your proof of vision screening if you've had it with uh, in the last six months, like Karen Hervey noted. If you haven't had it, no worries, that won't pro, um, prohibit you from uploading registration. Once, if you do it through the health department, they'll get us a list and we'll take care of it from there. Um, the next two items are, are required only if they pertain to your child. It is now required if your child has an IEP to upload that in your registration as well. In the past, um, current SLEAN students who attended our early childhood, we did not require to upload. Um, we are now requiring that because families coming from out of district were not uploading the IEP and that was that was causing a little bit of a problem. Also guardianship or custody papers, if that pertains to you as well, we do require that to be uploaded. As we are processing enrollments, um, if there's a problem or missing documentation, we will reach out to you either via phone or email. Um, if we could go. I know there's a, there's a few more things that I need to talk. Thank you. Um, just keep in mind that once you've submitted your registration, the system does not allow you to go back in to make changes. So if you've submitted and realize you need to make a change or add something to your file, you will need to um, email registration at sleanschools.org and we will take care of that from the back end. Um, once everything is submitted and processed, we will get information to the appropriate school building for placement and then teacher information um, goes out to families approximately a week before school starts. So uh, that's pretty much sums up registration. It's pretty simple. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and now I believe we'll turn it over to questions. Thank you to all of our panelists who've done an outstanding job going through all of these aspects of uh, the beginning of school. Um, at this point, we can take some questions and answers. Please use the raise hand feature. Anna Brittnell will call your name so that we only have one person speaking at a time. And if there's a particular person you're targeting your question toward, you can go ahead and indicate that so they know to answer who, to, who can answer your question. Okay, and thanks to all the other um, staff on the call that have been answering in the chat. That's been super helpful. Erin, um, you've had your hand up the longest. I'm going to allow you to talk. Erin put her hand down. Kat, you are next. Kat, if you have a question, you can go ahead and ask it. It looks like it looks like you're muted right now. Okay, I'm gonna move to Andy. Okay, Andy, I don't uh, know if you're there. I see Andy um, in the chat, and I have seen this question a couple of other times that deals with schools of choice. So the application for schools of choice, um, Mandy, I don't know if you have a timeline on that maybe to give some information. Um, yep, so right now, school of choice applications, we will start accepting those Monday, April 4th, or they will be online 
and the deadline to apply will be Tuesday, May 3rd. The lottery will take place on May 9th to, um, so families will know if they've received a spot or not within School of Choice. Okay, thank you. Andrew, I'm gonna go in to allow you to talk. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, this may be a question for Tracy. Um, so this will be my child's first time um, on the bus. So when they get to the actual school, will the teacher meet them at the bus or how will they know where to go? Because I can see him being like lost. I can actually jump in from a building perspective. Each building has their own kind of bus procedures, but all of our students will have someone there to guide them so they know exactly where to go and meet their teacher. Okay, who, who would that be? Like a volunteer or? Some of, our, some of our schools use PTA volunteers. Some of our schools have their staff in the hallway guiding the students. Some of our schools have their teachers there because they would have just met them the day before at the orientation. So it's a little different based on each building, but I promise you we will make sure that your kiddo is cared for and guided and gets exactly to the right place. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I don't see any other hands at this time. If, if there are any others, um, feel free to raise your hand with a question. Rex, I do see there was one from Anna that said, do you have a district map to see for sure which elementary school our children are supposed to attend? What's the best way for them to, to get that information? I can talk on that a little bit. Um, we don't have a map that shows the three elementary boundaries, but we do have something called the street guide on the SalineSchools.org website on the transportation page. If you don't find your street on there, it may be that you're in a newer subdivision and we're happy to help if you just wanna give us a call or send an email. Thanks, Tracy. And Amy has a question. I will allow you to talk. I have a question about the iPad minis and headphones that you mentioned. Are those something that stay at the school or is that something that they are supposed to bring back and forth? And I can answer that question. The iPad minis are district owned, so they stay at the district every day and they're housed there. They don't travel with the students. Um, the headphones would come from home and then they stay with the classroom in their cubbies or bins in, located in the classroom. Thanks. Yep. Question in the chat, where can we find the kindergarten curriculum? I think it was mentioned it was in one of those slides, but does a principal want to jump in? Yep, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. All right, we have another question. Let's see. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Um, I had a question about the screening date for kindergartens. Is it all the kids getting screened, whether they're going young fives or kindergartens, or this is just strictly for young fives? So there are actually two separate screenings. So there are the kindergarten screenings for students that are enrolling in kindergarten, and that helps us to create those balanced classes and is one of the tools that we use. Um, to try to create great learning environments for everyone. But then there is also the Young Five screening, which is the brigands that Ms. Sickler had talked a little bit about. And that helps us to make a determination on whether your child is more appropriately placed in kindergarten or in Young Fives. And that would only be if your child is eligible for Young Fives. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay, a couple of questions from the chat. What is the likelihood that a student is assigned to the to young fives in their assigned elementary school as opposed to another elementary school? And does that impact their bus availability? That's a really tough question to answer. And the reason is, is because we really have to wait and see what we learn from you. So we are going to make our decisions based on our enrollment. We're going to determine how many sections that we offer based on enrollment, and that will determine where space is available. Sometimes we have to hold off on those determinations because when we get that information at the very end, it can shift. 
So we do our very, very best to make sure that all the students are placed in their home building. But again, we really have to wait and see what we learn from, from all of you during enrollment on where these kiddos need to go because we're, we're going into this blind right now. We don't know who, so we're gonna learn from you. And Chelsea has her hand raised. I'm going to allow you to talk. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I just want to let you know that the document that you just shared out for the curriculum, you've shared it out in edit mode. <laughs> we'll go in and fix that. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep. Have a good one. Another one in the chat. Um, let's see. What is the amount of time that a child will spend on a device per day and how much learning emphasis is put on learning on a device? I think that's a great teacher for a uh, question for one of our teachers. I know that we have a balanced program where we do have some devices, but we also really value the importance of interaction and play and direct teaching instruction. So if one of the teachers want to pipe in, that would be really helpful. I can answer that. Um, we have a variety of uh, platforms that we use um, when it comes to technology. I know Robin mentioned the seesaw and typically I know that in my classroom and neighboring classrooms here at Harvest, um, they're just more or less used as like a platform to showcase for the students to kind of showcase their learning. And um, it can be sent to you like on the fly so that you have a little sneak peek or insight as to the things that we're learning in the classroom. But um, those, those types of things are typically minimal. Um, we also have a program called eSpark and it is uh, geared towards students learning, individual learning where they're at with their math and their reading. Um, and uh, we do try to, um, uh, incorporate those into our daily plan, like um, Monday through Thursday at least. But I personally, my students are never on their device for, we shoot for maybe 10 to 12 minutes, um, maybe a little longer at the beginning, just because it actually takes a while to get them acclimated to logging on and such. Um, but we have some great support with third grade buddies to help with that as well. But um, we recognize that, you know, it has its benefits, but there is this, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. So I would say that the amount of time on technology is minimal. Um, and uh, we really pay close attention to monitor that so that it's um, appropriate for them and um, certainly not a majority part of their school day. So many facets to show what they know. Okay, another question, what happens if there are more kiddos than available at the young five level, spots available? Again, that would be a determination that we would have to make based on the information. Um, what may likely happen is we would not be able to take a lot of school of choice students or what may likely happen is we have to add another section. We just don't know until we look at that. And I know that can be really frustrating because you're, you're asking and, and want an answer. And, and again, the, the folks in the room won't know what those answers are until we, till we see what we're dealing with. Okay, let's see. Uh, if our son is just outside of the Young Five age requirements, end of July birthday, can we sign up for the Young Five assessment in May? I would say yes. Um, sort of what we talked about at the beginning is that there are a lot of data points that we use. And so if that is a data point that you are curious about, um, and we're looking at that, that window and how close they are and, and spots available and all of that, we can use that to make some of that determination. I think Mandy shared with uh, this earlier, but you are also able to register and start that registration process because um, I know it takes time to, to find some of those proofs of residency and all of those pieces. And then we can make some slides over from Young Five to Kindergarten or vice versa down the road. So don't feel like you need you have to have all of these pieces right now. You can start this process, um, start gathering that information, trying to reach out to your pediatrician to get some of the immunization, all of that. Um, and those pieces, we can make those, those slides if we need to um, when we have more information. Brian, I think this one might be for you. How do you recommend parents uh, proceed, proceed with signing up for before and after care if they are not sure yet uh, if they will need it based on bus or school pl placement? And is there a fee for signing up and canceling? I personally responded to her. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> I just did it. Um, but check and take it. I mean, obviously, we, when we fill, we do fill how much staff we have, but I would recommend, we have had parents with this, kind of, this question before, the call in our office and speaking to our director, Lee Severio, who does a phenomenal job getting you into the program. 
kind of lay out options, what we're looking at. And so uh, registration starts on April 4th. So if you call our office tomorrow or Friday, um, you'll kind of be able to walk you through the scenarios on what we've done before. Thanks. How do the teachers yep. deal with social and emotional growth within the kindergartners? I think this is a great question for one of our kindergarten teachers. <laughs> so I, this time. I'll try to take it. Um, social emotional is part of, I would say, every day in kindergarten, um, starting from the foundation of when they walk in. It's not just about academics, uh, especially in kindergarten. It's about um, a well-rounded little person and understanding their environment and learning the rules and how to be a good friend. And in each of the buildings, there's a variety of different programs, um, social thinking programs, um, alphabet for um, the humanity. I know um, Learning in Me is at Woodland Meadows. There's there and Harvest has um, a program as well. There's a variety of um, information that is given to the parents based on what program is in their specific school. But I would say in kindergarten that social emotional is a daily um, occurrence in how um, the children are taught. It is in the forefront, I think, of every teacher in kindergarten's mind because it's a foundation skill that they need to have throughout their entire lives. And so we really um, pair it with academics daily. Um, and in the first few weeks of school, social emotional is probably um, even more so than the academics because they just need to learn what it's like to be in school in a group of um, with um, other children, learning their building, their community. And so it's a lot of community building within the classroom and also within the building. Um, so it happens, I would say, um, from the first day of kindergarten until the last day of kindergarten when they leave us every single day. Thank you. Thanks to everyone who was also taking care of some of these questions. Um, for Molly, for kids with special needs, how will paraprofessionals be assigned? Great question. That is an IEP team decision. So we will meet with you as the parent and service providers, and we'll make a determination of their level of need together. Thank you. What is the ratio of teacher staff to student in the kindergarten classroom? That, that ranges based on all the pieces that we have. We are currently running um, kindergarten classrooms from about between our buildings between 23 and 26. Um, we know that obviously smaller class sizes are better, right? So all those pieces. And so we look at a lot of different data points to make that determination. And then what are the, the additional supports that our students need as they come to school for the very first time? Okay, going back up really quick. What safety precautions do you take for small children riding the bus, i.e. seatbelts? If there are no seatbelts, why not? When it is required by law for children to be buckled up in their family's vehicles. Okay, um, so nope, there are not seatbelts on the bus for um, for our students who are younger than um, young five kindergarten, that would be our, our ECSE program students, they do have equipment for some of our special needs students, they may have equipment on the bus, but for our regular uh, our regular riders, there are no seat belts, and that is because of compartmentalization. That is, um, our seats are actually made of a foam that absorbs energy, and um, they're designed. The school bus is designed for safety. Uh, I can certainly post a link to some information about that on the uh, chat if you'd like. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, let's see, what is being taught around DEI for the kids? I can jump in there with that. Um, I think all of our buildings across the board, we teach about respect, respecting people who are different from you, respecting people who are similar to you and learning about others and learning to see the world um, through, through that lens of someone else, as well as learning and teaching how others may see the world through your lens. So um, each of our buildings really values diversity, we value equity, and we value in inclusion. So there's not a specific curriculum that you could go and look up. I just know that, that all of our teachers value that, and we try to promote those opportunities within every classroom across the district. Okay, it looks like we might have one more. Do I need all of the required documents for registration when I register my student as 
of school of choice as school of choice or do I provide the documents after my student gets accepted is accepted. So for school of choice families, we will ask you to wait to see if they get accepted through the lottery and then if they do get accepted when you enroll, we will require all of the necessary documents to process. Okay. I do not see any more hands or any more questions in the chat. Well, I just I'd want like to say thank every. Oh, sorry, Emily, you go first. Oh, I was just saying to say thank you for everyone who is still here. That was a lot of information. And so we will be sharing out um, this recording. We'll be sharing out, we can do a one pager, which are some of those quick links. And then also, like if you have a question, here's the person to contact. I hope that you see that here in Slane Schools. We are a team. There are a lot of people that support because we know that when you cut your child comes, they come to be a learner, they come to get on the bus and have all these experiences. And we want all parts of that day um, beginning to end to be really positive. If you do have questions or things that come up, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. We only do this important work because we can do it shoulder to shoulder with each and every one of you. So thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to having your children join us. Thanks, everyone.